hour on the 27th of July 2018. And right here on MMU TV, we have the happenings of the day aligned for you. Welcome, my name is Maina Eric. But first, let's have a look at the news highlights. The county government of Kajado County has made incentives to work on roads. And the Mao Forest Evacuation Saga continues to receive divided opinions. Plastic bags use is still evident despite its ban late last year. Serikali metuacha hivo, watuweke angalau kadaraja. And Rongai residents still pushing for attention on deadly Kandisi River. The Kajado County government has started putting down to task the funds allocated to it. This is evident in the ongoing construction of Ongata Rongai Roads, an incentive that has received positive remarks from the local residents. Elijah Wekesa reports. It is a year down the line. The promises made by their leaders have already started being fulfilled. Construction of roads, bridges and trenches is ongoing in Rongai town to enhance transportation and drainage sectors. The Gajado County government led by Governor Joseph Olelengu has vowed to provide efficient, affordable and reliable infrastructure for suitable economic development through construction, rehabilitation and effective management of all infrastructural facilities. Rongai atuja kuwa na na lami. Ni ni sehemu moja ambao wakati wa mvua, wakati wa kumbi tumepata shida kubwa sana. Na tunashukuru kidogo ambao tuna tuna tumepata. Ah, kazi kanzo wanafanya kazi nzuri. Hata barabara wametengeneza inaonekana. But while the CBD of Kajado County, Rongai Center, is booming with infrastructural programs, the residents of Candice Ward adjacent to Rongai Town are languishing in poor infrastructure, especially roads. With barely one year after ushering in of the new management in Kajiado, the Kajiado County government management has already shown its clone that it is up to task to ensure that the people of Kajiado live a better life. This is one of the only projects that the government has initiated. Elijah Okesa for Natives Production. Following the government order on the evacuation of all Mau Forest residents, divided opinions have continued to be raised. This comes along with the intervention of even those in the leadership positions. Kenyanjui Alex with the details. Mau eviction circus is back, and this time it's more louder and threatening than it has ever been. With the government set to kick off the second phase of Mau evictions, politics and chaos have threatened to derail not only the process, but also the unity within Jubilee Party. <laughs> A section of Rift Valley leaders, led by Majority Senate leader Kipchumba Murkomen, moved to oppose the evictions, terming them as a plan to scatter Deputy President Ruto's 2022 presidential bid by antagonizing him against Mau evictees. We want to tell them to the face, the government of Kenya will not allow People of Kenya were to make it come of Ibaraka Yakisiasa. It was only yesterday that Narok residents, led by Maasai leaders, held demonstrations against the section of Rift Valley leaders opposed to the evictions. It is an issue that has sharply divided leaders, with a section of Maasai leaders calling for Murkomen ejection as majority leader. <laughs> Whether the Mau evictions will be carried to the letter is an issue that many will be keeping their eyes on in the coming days and probably one that will continue to draw conflicting opinions among the political circles. Kenyanjui Alex, Native Production. Moving on, Rongai residents are still raising their concern about the Kandisi River, which has been denoted to be a hot spot, especially during the heavy rainy season. In our feature tonight, we focus on their cry, as totally laid down by Elijah Wekesa. 
Kandisi River is the most important and iconic river for Kandisi residents. With a length of 1,500 kilometers, it flows from the east to the west region of Kandisi. It flows through four regions, that is Ngong, Kiserian, Kandisi up to Rongai. It sources its water from the hills of Ngong, a spectacular region. The river enriches huge agricultural land sustaining Kandisi residents, making it a significant item to them. Kandisi as a river has a capacity to feed all lives along it, starting from human, animals, plants, and also the environment. It is a major source of water for human usage, washing clothes, and even to the further end of drinking for some people. Kuna, kuna mime ambayo imepandwa kama miti, tunachota hiyo maji wakati mwingine wakati wakiangazi kwa... With its presence in the area, the Kandisi residents have managed to improve on their agricultural sector through irrigation by help of the water from the river. Despite the iconic status, Kandisi River is facing formidable pollution pressure along with the environmental sustainability amounting from high population along it. Today, it is tainted by the outbetting, outpouring sewage, solid and industrial waste churned by human and economic activities along the riverbank, thus making it dangerous to lives along it. Kandisi River is a dangerous icon during high tides since it accumulates large volumes of water, making it to overflood. You can see it where all the rubbish is on, on the high branches of the trees. You see you know, how, how high it was and it was very, very high. To the residents of Kandisi, the mighty seasonal Kandisi River has its merits and demerits, but their cry still remains that the county government of Kajiado should intervene in the betterment of the bridges so as to enhance efficiency during crossing of the river during high tides. Elijah Okesa, Natives Production. Thank you for staying tuned. We are taking a short commercial break and shall be back with more news. Made pulpy orange, filled with the goodness of real orange pulp in every cup. Now in many flavors. Welcome back. Despite the government putting a ban on the use of plastic bags late last year, the law seems not to have taken major effect. And as Brian Ondimu reports, this has led to more environmental havoc in Rongai town. In August last year, Kenya, through the Ministry of Environment, put in place legislation banning the use of plastic carrier bags. This occurred as an initiative geared towards sustainable conservation of the environment and turned out to be the most disruptive legislation introduced in the country that year, with consumers, particularly those in urban setting, just getting used to carrying the reusable bags for their shopping trips. Several months later, the same trend of using these plastic bags seemed to have prevailed in most parts of the country, where they are used in factories, shops and stores in the packaging of such products as milk, rice, bread, biscuits, and several other products. This appears to be mocking the measures of the then enacted legislation. The plastic bag scene still continues to be a menace in most dumping sites and streets, meaning the production of these bags has since then prevailed. Most of the plastic bags on this dump site here appear fresh and to have been recently used, with the ban on plastic bags having been effective for almost a year now. Was the ban really effective? Brian Ondimu, Natives Production. In other news, the initiative by the county government to set up street lights in Rongai town has boosted the security situation in the area, as David Oriku reports. 
residents of Ongata Rongai have been complaining about the high level of insecurity in the area. The residents now can sigh a sigh of relief as the county government installed lights in most parts of the area. The initiative powered by the national government through Kenya Power and Lighting Company has gained roots around the country. Earlier on, the level of insecurity was very high. So many businesses were locked down. Like this shop here is one of the casualties of insecurity in this area. Rongai residents now say they can open their businesses for long without fear of insecurity. <laughs> The initiative by the county government to install lights in the air is a boost to security in the air. The residents hope that more lights will be installed by the county government. For Netis Production, I'm David Oriku. And now, on to business news. Technological advancements, the movie business has invaded the market with a storm. Polino Kenga portrays the business opportunity showcased in movies and CD burning. Cinematic places and theatre rooms are only believed to be the major source of visual entertainment, but the emergence of digital movie shops has become a quite popular scenery in many towns you visit in Kenya, since people can now buy what they are interested in and watch at the comfort of their homes. Kiambu Town has not been left behind. In store, we have a young entrepreneur named Owin. His movie shop is along the busiest streets in this blooming town. Many have fallen for the stereotype that movie shops have become a monotonous business which no longer brings much returns and Owin has a different opinion. This man is a shara bar, but he is a shara poor, but according to his money base. For native production, I'm Paulino Kenga. The cold season has already set in and has been cited to extend from the month of July to August. You take a look at how Rungai residents are adapting to this weather condition. Rungai Center is characterized by warm climate since it lies at the hot suburbs of Kajiado County. But the direct opposite is being experienced this month with cloudy skies taking a lion's share of the day. Thus, the scene at hand is notable, Rungai residents in heavy outfits to keep warm. This comes along with the advantage of buyers flocking the marketplaces in search of this comfort. And as Franklin denotes, the business is worthwhile. Your weather and you may be and you may have a trench. To him and others in the business alike, the wish is that the current weather persists irrespective of the fizzy drink sellers facing a blow. Owing to the cold season weather forecast that has been cited to last for the next one month, the trench coat business continues to face a business boom. For Natives Production Business Desk, Amina Eric, Wairimo.